strife between natural and coordinators. Uh, Kigali and Atherin uh, will have to put up with the five preventers as their bodyguards for a little while as they work together to help the world trail the newfound path. And Atherin uh, promises to stay by Kigali's side and protect her all the way. Lacus has come along, but a lot of people in Plant haven't forgiven her for her treachery, even though it was done for the right reasons and with their best interests in heart. Uh, she, like Athrun, has lost her home and left to leave, but she liked nothing better than to see the world at Kira's side either way. And when she finally finds something new she can do to make the world a better place, Kira's going to be there right with her. Flay then comes over to call Kira and Lacus back to the Archangel, because everyone's waiting for him. And then Kira says goodbye to everybody, and they, uh, Athrun and Kira promise to see each other again soon. Aboard the rehome, Lo has helped Guy uh, Murakuno tune up the blue frame once again, and uh, Lo's going to be gone for quite some time. He's going to help with the project to revitalize Mars now that the Earth has settled down, so he's uh, going to give uh, the blue frame an extra special service. Uh, with any development project that big, junk is going to be indispensable, and the rehome is better suited to an asteroid hopping in Korea than a warship anyway. Uh, prayer tells. There he is. Prayer tells Kazahana that he's going to be going along too with Maltio's blessing. Uh, he doesn't know how long his health will hold up, but he's going to see as much of the world as he can before he just fucking dies. And Kazahana wishes him to have a good trip, but wants him to call every now and then. Uh, Prayer does have a job though. He uh, delivers uh, Estrada Canard, which I think is because we got Canard, he just is delivering it to him. Uh, he says he doesn't uh, need it anymore, and he's sure that Canard has uh, learned enough to put it to good use. Uh, everybody else will have to... Uh, well, we got him, so he's here. Uh, uh, Kazahana accepts the job in Sermon Tail's name. Prayer thanks everyone for helping him. And uh, Lo echoes the sentiment saying that even if uh, they never see each other again, he'll never forget any of us as long as he lives. Fucking canard, you dingus. Uh, the Nesco Sea is still being used for peacekeeping patrols. It's uh, more lonely than it was when it had everybody on it. Uh, some of the pilots, including Ryoko and Gaida Goji, have returned to the regular army, but they're understandably sceptical of the claim that all traces of the Blue Cosmos faction have been eliminated. Uh, they want to stick around until they hear back from Muru and Mu about the situation. Uh, some of the crew have returned back to their civilian lives, including Hikaru, who's gone back to drawing manga. Uh, Izumi's back to being a waitress in her bar, and Minato and Yukina are back to being a teacher and student. Uh, Uribataki and Genichiro went back to working with the Nurgle Secret Service, and even Inez are returned to Nurgle's headquarters. Uh, Yurik is also gone, but that's because her and her uncloaked prince are finally off on that honeymoon. Lapis reports uh, to Rory that the Earth Tekken men are the first reinforcements to have arrived, ahead of Ed, Zex, Noin and the others, and they have been recently assigned to the Desco to make up for the lost crew. Uh, Sabroda would have expected Yumi to have gone after D-Boy, but she said she's made peace uh, with not being together with him, and she's going to find her own love as an adult. And they're like, oh, I guess that means Hilo's got a shot. Uh, Oh no, no, they go, oh, that means Hydro hasn't got a shot because he hasn't uh, drawn her attention yet. And David uh, goes, step up your game, kiddo, before it's too late. And then Natasha says, I'll give you some advice sometime, Hayato, because uh, I'm in charge now of the team. Uh, inwardly, Rory wonders if Akito will ever use the thing she gave him. Uh, said thing... It's an old ramen recipe. Uh, he's been tested by the Ghetto Boys and the Mazinga crew, and uh, it's good as hell. Uh, Yurika's still helping him run the place, and everyone, including Hayato, admits that uh, the ramen place is getting better day by day. And uh, Saka asks if Akito perfected a new recipe. And uh, Akito says he's still wearing his fucking shades, though, for a reason, though. Uh, he says the improvement's mostly due to the fact that he's steadily recovering his senses thanks to Liger's rehab. His taste has recovered enough that he could finally cook again. Uh, Yurika's glad to be called the missus of the restaurant. And Akito's glad that she's been there um, by his side during all these uh, this month of treatments. Uh, they'll continue for a while, but he's confident that one day he'll be able to remove his sunglasses for good and show his natural eyes to the world again. Where's Koji? Uh, Koji uh, volunteers to keep on taste testing until that uh, day comes and boss uh, is readily available too. Free meals are never something they'll turn down. Tetsuya comes in and tells Koji to come with him, and Koji says, You should have called instead of coming all the way, jeez! And Tetsuya says, no, I wanted to check on Akito's recovery. And Yuka says uh, she invited them over so she could serve them lunch before deployment. Uh, Benkei then goes, ah, oh, it's been tough taking all these makeup tests and still finding time to patrol. And Haito's like, yep, but par for the course. Tetsuya asks Sos if Sosuke's around, but him and Chidori are away at Mirida Island for a certain conference. 
but there's some strange mecha beasts to beat up, and Ryoma is hella hyped to fight him. His curry inspired leaderly conduct, even as Haido impressed. The conference on Merida Island is finally wound down, and Tessa tells uh, Chidori that she can return uh, back to her normal student life. But how normal that is going to be with Sosuke there is up for debate. Uh, Sosuke's continued guard duty has been formally approved by uh, Mithril, and he vows to do his best as always. With that, Kurt Samal busts in and go, Yo, it's time to party, fuckers! And they grab uh, Chidori uh, off to give uh, Sosuke and Tessa some time alone together. Uh, Sosuke asks if there's something the matter, and Tessa is all flustered, and he's like, Nope, there's no problem! Why would there be a problem? So, uh, but, but she gathers her composure. And she tells uh, Sosuke that uh, two Haida Danan is almost ready to return to its normal mission. Uh, their enemies are still at large, even though the world is nominally at peace. Uh, she saw that Amalgam's Whispered means to settle the score with her one day, if not with Sosuke and Chidori too. And then inwardly she tells herself that it's for the best that she just step out of their way and let uh, Chidori and Sosuke be. Uh, she apologises to Sosuke for all the rough stuff she's put him through and hopes they can still be friends. And then uh, Sosuke says, if we're friends I'd like to, mission to speak bluntly. And she's like, go ahead. And then uh, he calls her Tessa, and he asks for her forgiveness, and he says that she's an amazing girl, and not just his superior officer. Uh, she's more important than that, and should something happen, he promises to do anything he can for her. And then he uh, starts stammering, and he's like, sorry, for, for presuming to speak so bluntly, and then he goes off in a huff. And then she's like, Tessa? Tessa? He called me Tessa? Oh my god, what do I do? And he says I'm important to him. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Ah! And then Mardukus runs in and is like, what's all the shouting about? And she's like, oh, you were imagining thing, part Mardukus. Give me a report on the Danan. And then inwardly, she realises she's got to battle both her military foes and her rival in love. But she's up to the challenge. Uh, at one point in the manga, and it might happen in 3-2 as well, um, there's a bit where like she rescues, he rescues Tessa. And uh, she's like, so? And he's like, no, I'm sorry, I... It's not going to end that like way. She's like, oh, well, alright, fine. At least you're honest. Sosuke, meanwhile, has taken Chidori to his secret fishing hole, uh, where it's uh, where he always goes when he comes to this island. Uh, this is where he wanted to bring her before. Like, every time when he's like, how would you like to go to, on a trip? And she's like, hell yeah. And then they went on the submarine. She's like, fucking jerk, you should have been clearer. But this is where he always wanted to take her. And uh, she's uh, a lot for words at it. And uh, she tells him that she's never really thanked him for saving her until now. And he says he was just keeping his promise, uh, not just carrying out his mission. And yeah, she's like, oh, not just the mission. And then he tells her that he's sorry for the things he said to her at the Denan party. And she's like, oh, there's water under the bridge, don't worry. Uh, if he really wants to apologise, he should catch her a huge fish, like a whale or something. And then Sosuke says, whales aren't fish. And she says, don't get hung up on technicalities. And he's like, right, roger. And uh, then inwardly, she hopes that these days continue forever. Back at G Island, Mamoru and friends have just finished the last quarter of their school year, with the new year starting in April. And that means flower viewing season. Uh, Kaido would be glad to accompany Mamoru and his family to check everything out. Uh, uh, Hana-chan is glad that both Kaido and Mamoru can attend regular school again, and they're both glad to be back. And inwardly, uh, Mamoru realises it's about time for Guy and the others to leave. At Orbit Base, Tiger's uh, debriefing everybody present about the upcoming mission to perform a second survey of Jupiter for the building of a base around Saturn. Uh, Humor will be the local commander, and Guy says uh, Mikoto doesn't have to leave Earth behind. She's like, nope, I'm going wherever you go. Uh, the Space Knights are going to be part of the mission, and three minutes was D-Boy and Miyuki, if she was here, uh, that he and Mike will take out the last remaining random trees in their absence. Uh, happily, uh, it seems that D-Boy won't have to tech set anytime soon, so uh, Sinuous Crystal is helping his bodily stabilize entirely. Should any problems arise, uh, Balzac will deal with it alongside Furyu and Ryu. Uh, Akira reminds D-Boy that he doesn't have to fight anymore, but he's not one to withhold power when he can do anybody any good. And uh, Aki and Guy agree and feel the same, and uh, should they need to risk their lives, they'll have the power of our courage and the genetic power on our side. Voltron crew are going to head back to Altea, uh, hearing memories of the warm hearts, uh, no, bearing memories of the warm hearts of the Earthlings. Uh, Tiger passes along a message from the Secretary General uh, that once Altair is well and truly stabilised, they'd like to br begin formal diplomatic relations. Uh, Fryer tells them that they won't have to wait too long for that day to arrive because uh, there's a few remnants of the Garo in there to deal with. 
Uh, Farah asks Jay to accompany them, but he refuses and says uh, the J-Arc has yet to fly its fill. Uh, should the day come when its endless flight loses its last stone, we sure to head for Altea, and uh, Rene is going to be by his side until the day his wings finally seek rest. Uh, Swan promises Jay that she'll look after Kaido, at least until he grows uh, old enough to look after himself, and uh, Jay's like, yep, and that's when I'm going to whisk him away we'll back on some adventures. And uh, But it'll be up for Kaido to decide what, he's, what he wants to do with his life then. Tomaru uh, wishes everybody well. He wants to figure out what organ's essence within him wants to do with his life. Uh, he'll have Michi's help for that. Uh, he's already decided on one thing he wants to do eventually. He wants to journey the stars in search of the newly self-aware evoluders. He wants to greet them, not as a hated enemy, but as their kin. And D-Boy uh, knows that the evoluders will change, uh, as will mankind and even himself. Uh, no longer bound by the destiny of the Adam, he's got a request for Aki. And he asks Aki to call him Takaya. Uh, free of his mask, he tells his family and uh, friends from the Argos that this is how he'll live out his days and that he won't waste the life they help protect. Just then, Galen calls up and he, uh, he's like, Yo, Golden Tiger, they're ready to depart. It's time to begin their journey towards the future. Inference, seems Sapientia's repairs have gone well. Still not one for compliments, sir. You haven't forgotten how he lent you a hand with those repairs, did you? you the ones that broke it in the first place. I don't really think I need to be thankful after that. Uh, stop, you two. It won't do us any good to begin our journey by arguing with one another. Understood, mother. <laughs> Listening to you say that, uh, to regulate, shows how far you've come. Yep, yeah, inference seems to have accepted regulate as his mother after all. Seems the database is becoming one happy family. Of course, they're like ours. Then, Akane, would you like us to become a family of our own? Sure, if you want to, then I could be your wife and... Uh, no, what did I just say? Uh, Miss Akane? What? Kara, I got a little distracted from all this happiness around me. I would first offer my felicitations, but I was going to inform you that the communication lines are set to ON. CONGRATULATIONS, YOU TWO! <laughs> it seems like Akane beat me to it. Then, Horace will be another brother. <sighs> so this is what this is uh, a human proposal and its acceptance. Oh, Akane, you're gonna be a bride! That's so cute! N no way, I turned the signal to OFF! Yeah, and then I changed it to one. I wanted everyone to hear this special occasion. S -s 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 Stupid Horace! And that's that, I think. It's too late for you to refuse my proposal. After all, the trailer maxim says, Hold fast to that which is spoken once, and he who makes the other speak first wins. Heh <laughs> tricked you into marrying me, lady. I turned all the things on. Applicant, what will you be doing after this? We've both been guilty, uh, uh, we have been guilty of irreparable errors. It's possible that remnants of civilizations that we attacked in the past are still alive, and if so, we'd like to support those survivors to the best of our ability. We'll use the technological data stored in our records to do so. I think you'll pull it off, applicant. The way you stopped Sapientia's explosion was every bit as amazing as my own dad. <sighs> Hearing you say that makes me twice as eager for the mission ahead. Be well, Arya. Don't forget us. Of course not, Mihara. After all, you're my precious younger sister. Let's go, Arya. We'll be your family from now on. I understand, Lord Inference. Your family now, so you can drop the Lord thing. Then would it be okay if I called you Big Brother? Y yeah, that'd be nice. And in that case, I'd like to start calling you Sister. All right, I love you, Big Brother. Well then, I believe it's time for us to go. Hold on, just another second. Neo Wardens? Looks like we arrived uh, right on time, lass. Must have been exhausting uh, work to get everyone back together like this, Galen. Thank you, Warriors of Earth, for coming here to see us off. I remember every single one of you, not as an entry in the databanks, but a memory of my own. Alright, Inference, you hang in there, you hear? Thanks, Kazuma. I hope that we can meet again. Our new journey begins. Let's go! All preparations complete. Thanks, everyone. We'll meet again. You bet. Neither of us will forget each other. Also, make sure you remember the terror of space, the weaknesses of the individual, and the importance of life. All units forward, we sail towards an endless future. And off they go. They're all gone. Yep. We also have a new voyage to depart to, though. A new voyage? Uh, we don't have a specific def destination, but they say that the journey is its own reward. Not at all. There's one thing that we agree it must be done. We still need to do everything possible to avoid the 37th bankruptcy. You mean we're still that poor? Cheer up, Miro. This day we begin our trailer business. There's money all over the world. We'll be lining our pockets real soon. You're right. We'll hang in there, big bro. And then internally... Someday I'll go on a voyage on my own. There's still so many parts of space that no one's seen before. Father, it wasn't just the Valstalk you left us. You also left your dreams and your pride, and I'll use those in whatever battles that may come. This is how I live, as a spaceman of this universe.
Boom, got it. Credits. There's a little picture after the credits there. Oh my god, the very first thing Brunom did with all the money from the carryover was upgrade Noin to max and still get hit. Hey, what's the thing? What's the other thing that happens? They have to protect the... <laughs> Akito, hide me! What's wrong, Kazuma? You seem in a hurry. You trying to escape Noin and Mouse training? There was that, but now there's also... We found you, Kazuma! Now pick me, Kazuma! No, me! Me, it's me for sure! No, pick me, please! No way, you actually considering anyone other than me? <laughs> Give me a break! How did Kazuma get so popular? What's even going on? They gotta be under the effect of some mysterious drug. Or could it be black magic? Can you be blackmailing all girls in the team in one go? Hey, don't be thinking I can't normally be this popular. I'm sorry, but that's not possible. <laughs> She's right, you should know your limits. Now, Kazuma, hurry up and pick me. Out of all of us, you got to pick the prettiest one. Huh? Well, there are so many girls in the Wardens. Because of that, an argument started over who would be the prettiest one. So, we decided to start a poll to see who would be number one. And you all flocked to Kazuma to coerce his vote. Weird things happen in the downtime, huh? It's not like that, however. It's indispensable that we take time to set things completely straight. Decide, Kazuma. Pick me or go through hell. Your choice. I won't allow this, Ryoko. You can't press him like this. Th thank you, Captain. I knew you were a fair person. Kazuma is an important member of the Wardens, and there should be no reason for him to make this choice. I mean, it's obvious that I'm the favourite. The favourite? Oh, Akito, it's obvious. There's no choice other than me. What? Even if she's the Captain, I think that's way too tyrannical. I think the Captain's approval rating fell below the 30% mark. Interesting. Mal was just saying how we should take this time to set things straight. P please stop. Don't fight inside the restaurant. And then the president, the school president comes in. He's like, I couldn't help but hear your conversation. This battle. I ask that you trust me with it. The president of Jindai High Student Council, Atsunobu Hayashimizu. Everything can be settled at the stage of the culture festival. The culture festival's stage? Oh, my headache's coming back. And then, uh, instead of the lion thing, we got the... It's a beauty. It's a fucking beauty contest, and uh, and boss is like, hell yeah, bathing suit section. Looking forward to it. And then the prospector leads Professor Yumi up to the judges' table. There we go. There's the family shot. He's got his mullet. You know what? I didn't know that Horace had such a stupid fucking hat. Like he's got a little Donald Duck hat. Look at that. But yeah, Professor Yumi goes up to the judges' table and he's like, No, I've got business! And Prospector's like... And uh, the judges are Akatsuki and Kurtz. Yumi has no idea what's going on at all. He's like, what is even happening? Oh my fucking god. Sayaka comes out in a bathing suit, and the prospector introduces her as healthy and cute. And boss just fucking dies, and Nukamucha like, boss, your nose is bleeding. Uh, Akatsuki and Kurtz are impressed, and they're like, Ko Koji's a lucky man. And Kazuma is taking pictures that he's going to sell to Koji and uh, other possible clients. Akito is impressed, and then he begs Yumi's forgiveness, and Yumi's like, I don't see what there is to like about the girl. And then Akido like, he's like, what a splendid daughter I brought up. And then he realises that if his cover is blown here, it could prove fatal. He's got to keep up the act until Gami arrived, and it's obviously Baron Ashura. And that's uh, a bit in Mazin Kaiser, where he pulls off his face. Who's next? Uh, entry number 12 in the contest is Mihiro. 
And she uh, is like, welcome everybody, I'm here on behalf of the Valstork. And Kazuma is like, hell yeah, if you become the captain, then you can use the budget to give the Valhawk a power-up. Uh, next in line is number 18, Izumi, and she does uh, some puns, and, no, and and she's like, come on, let's get a good laugh. And then Hero and D-Boy just fucking stonewall her, uh, but Yumi starts cackling, because he's Baron Astro. It's like, wow, never heard anyone laugh so hard at one of Izumi's jokes. But he's just trying to fit in. Uh, the next woman, 25, was a last minute entry, Gamia Q. And everyone's like, damn, hair, beautiful hair, oh my god, so, ooh, golden, amazing. And Kurt Snakasuki, like, she's gonna be tough. And then she's a robot. And the last entry is Eureka, who gets on stage and does a V sign. And then Yumi goes, FOUND HER! He's analysed Eureka's speech patterns uh, as that as a complete moron and with the gravitas of a single sheet of very thin paper behind her smile. With her as the Nodesco's captain, the ship would be useless! So, he does his vote and activates the Mecha Beasts. And then, of course, it, uh, they're fucked. Because <laughs> she was already the captain. Poor Baron Ashura. He tried to work. Yeah, his hair came off! Yumi wears a wig! It's not like that! My dad's not bald! My dad's not bald! I think it's a really important duty of a captain is managing the alcohol on the ship. I'll need an extra large fridge to keep all that beer cool. Fucking Mal. And then Fumafo just fucking murders him with a gun. Then he introduces the Bontakun thing. Um, okay. Hikaru and Millie try to get Akito to reveal which of the Nesco girls he voted for, but he won't say. As for the winning vote, there are indications that the single deciding vote was cast by none other than Baron Ashura. Uh, but he was as Yumi's representative, there's no reason to disregard his vote. Uh, Levin sniffs and says that the most beautiful flower of all, the be most beautiful flower of all wasn't even on display in the contest. And that Kitsuki and Kurt's like, don't want to judge that bathing suit competition, buddy. But, uh... Levin is like, no, not me, idiots, it's Rory. And she's like, wow, I'm flattered that everyone thinks I should have won. And it's like, why didn't you take part? And she's like, I was embarrassed about coming on stage in a swimsuit. And then Akito says, that's a shame. She's like, Ooh, are you upset? No, she flushes and goes, are you upset? And she goes, no, that's not it at all. And then everybody's like, damn, Akito, you're a cool dude. <laughs> Fucking Akito, what a part of this shit. Fucking Akito, what's wrong with that dude? And then we save. We did it. And then if we load, what do we get? The bullshit. <laughs> that looks like the type of cheesy fucking uh, Christmas card that Kazuma would say. He would, right? It's got the little thing in there. He's there. He's showing off his mullet. Horace in the stupid hat. Bing, 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 bing. Oh, look, we gotta re fucking name everybody again. Do we get to pick his spells this time? No, I'm pretty sure we get to pick his spells, right? Yeah, there you go. So you get to choose his spell list. And it's what the one you learn at level 1, at level 5, 15, 25, 35, 45. And then uh, that's uh, how, what level of uh, upgrades the enemies have. And you can do 3, and every time you complete, you can put it up another 3. But, uh, yeah, so you can just give him whatever. Like, the, the one that breaks the game is you give him soul. 
give him soul and valor so he can do the SP trick and have infinite SP, so, you know, whatever. And I used to get rid of crit to give him accelerate. But, like, you can give him anything. Because once you've given him valor and soul, he's got infinite juice, right? There you go.